Hello and welcome to episode 26 of the Diz Unlimited podcast, coming to you live from the studio that Dreams Built. I'm Rhino, and today I'm joined only by Craig. Hey, hello. Just having a casual conversation about this week's Disney news. But before we get uh, into all that, I wanted to remind everyone that this and everything that we do is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel. You know what? And actually, speaking of Dreams Unlimited Travel, yeah, I paused there because uh, you hear about these new discount offers? I did. Well, I just want to bring them up real quick before we we dive into the news. Um, There's two going around. The first one is there's uh, for Disney Visa card members, you can get a free Disney dining plan for select arrival dates at Walt Disney World Resort in July, September, and December when you book a non-discounted four-night, four-day or longer Walt Disney World Travel Company package with the Park Hopper option. So beginning April 9th, which is today, Disney Visa Card members can enjoy a free Disney dining plan when you use your Disney Visa Card to purchase a non-discounted four-night, four-day. I completely... I copied and pasted this from the website, and I thought I had deleted this extra paragraph because it's on there twice. Uh, Anyway, uh, what what was I going to say here? Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Okay, so... These arrival nights that I talked about are for most nights, July 1st to the July 31st of 2024. Then you've got September 1st to September 7th, 2024, and December 9th to December 21st, 2024. Uh, And packages may be available for longer lengths of stay, like I said. So guess what? There's also another pretty good uh, discount out there. And let me tell you about that one, too, real quick here. Uh, Guests can stay longer to save more with this one, which is up to 30% off a stay at Select. Select Disney Resort hotels for bookings of five consecutive nights or more. They can also save 25% on shorter stays. This offer is valid for most stays, uh, most nights from July 8th to October 3rd, 2024. So it looks like there's deals pretty much going on from July through the end of the year if you're thinking about booking. But uh, if any of those are of interest to you, you can head over to dreamsunlimitedtravel.com today where you can get a free no obligation quote on your next Disney vacation and it will cost you nothing extra on your trip and you help support the channel and all the content they reproduce. So why not? Why not check that out, right? Uh, I'd also like to say a big thank you to our Patreon supporters out there as well. You make the show and our jobs continue to happen. So if you are interested in becoming a Patreon supporter and getting some exclusive Exclusive perks from different members of the Diz team, like the live post show that we're going to be doing immediately following this one. Head over to patreon.com slash Diz Unlimited. And one last thing, if you are watching this on YouTube, make uh, maybe take a second. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Hit that bell. You'll get notified whenever we have new content coming out. Also, don't forget about those thumbs up. You know, we got those opposable thumbs. Why not use them? Let's give ourselves some thumbs up. Um, Now, I think that's going to do it for this week's episode. I'd like to thank everyone for tuning in. I'm just kidding. It feels like that... That opening took me 10 years. Uh, it did take a little bit of time, but... I had a little bit of mishmouth there. Yeah, so there was a, little, a lot to fine. say. You know, uh, John would be totally angry at us if we didn't mention those brand new discounts, and they help keep us employed, so we obviously have to do that. Yeah. But this has been uh, quite a, a struggle to even get here today. Uh, first off, were you successful getting your tickets for the Disneyland Pride Night? Disneyland Pride, baby. June 18th, June 20th. See you all there. Excellent, excellent. Unfortunately, I have to ask you to work those days. So, <laughs> Should have put in yeah, the request you, before I bought the tickets. Exactly. Whoops. You forgot to do that. Uh, uh, and I think I'm <clears throat> coming down with something. I think it's got like a two-month gestation period. I, I've read about. I just don't believe you <laughs> at all with that, but that's okay. Uh, yeah, no, we're... Uh, so <laughs> that was obviously happening. And then Disney just dropped uh, news, which we will cover in just a little bit here. Uh, but even beyond that, we I, I didn't know if we were going to get this uh, even done today. Obviously, we're not sitting in the spots that we had previously set up. If you watch the video version of this podcast, uh, Hannah is currently on the 
Disney wish. She's so, living her best yeah, life. Was, we're not. She's got a drink in hand, too. She sent us a photo today, so don't worry about her. No, I, I miss <laughs> that one, but uh, I'm yeah. jealous. I, that's where I would want to be right now. So Hannah's on the Disney wish, and I went to text Teresa last night, like, hey, we could really use you on the show. And she said, oh, I just recovered from surgery <gasps> because she's having kidney stone issues again. Oh, and, no. Uh, if you want to hear more about her kidney stones, go back to uh, August when we did our live event at Disneyland. Yeah. And, uh, she she explained all about her kidney stone issues. But yeah, so Teresa, if you well, are yeah, watching or listening is. to this, yeah. okay, Teresa, we wish you were here. So that way we uh, weren't alone, just the two of us trying to make yeah. an hour of Disney content interesting. But we, we hope you're back here with us very soon. Yeah. But we do. We do. We do. I got new snacks, Teresa. Popcorn? Yeah. Microwave popcorn now. Honestly, what'd you say? <laughs> what'd you say? Microwave popcorn. Okay. Now, what'd you think? It I sounded said? like you said something else. I'm not going to say microwave that, popcorn now. Microwave popcorn. Okay, that's fantastic. What? Listening okay. through the headphones. Sometimes okay. You don't All right. Hear I was like, God, I it's okay. It. It's okay. I'll tell you afterwards. So, hey, uh, what'd you do yesterday for the eclipse? Because that threw us in the funk that we're in today. Um, I was here at the studio. I after having gone to like five different places to find glasses to watch it, um, which were gone. And you know what the worst part about all of it was? So Warby yeah. Parker was giving out free glasses, but if you called them, it was right on their voicemail. They're like, "We're already out of these. Don't come here." Don't even and, bother. And then um, you had sent me the other places, and I. I saw that Sonic did the um, the free thing. drink. Yeah. yeah, and so I or was like, free with "Well, it's not drink. free. Yeah, free yeah. with the drink." So I went. I get there. Their system's down. I have some a question they can't answer me. I ask another question they can't answer me. So I just order in the app. I see it on the sign. It says "free with the drink." I'm like, "Okay," and I put this order in. The lady brings it out, and she's like, "Oh, you know, we're out of the glasses, right?" <laughs> and I was like, "Why would I order this awful drink? Uh, this black colored, um, sorry, I'm hitting these mics twice, black colored slushy." That like I was just like I I so whatever I ended up with the world's worst hot dog and a um this blackout slushy and then uh, but Warby Parker on their website had um like the t- two pieces of paper you could print out where you pinhole through one and then it projects yeah. the clip you know nothing special like watching the world's smallest clip on thing but. I stood out here. I went to the back seat of my car. I opened the doors. I put on four pairs of sunglasses in the window the through the tent of the window and I did a quick to see if i could see it you know like a normal like oh, i'm just looking at the clouds i'm not looking at the sun i'm uh, and I'm i thought i blinded myself yeah, so. i am i'm very impressed in this you know you could have just come to magic kingdom with me and I saw it, it through my glasses not i, I, well, I thought you only time. had one pair i did only have one pair but it wasn't like i was staring you're only allowed to look through those glasses for like three minutes at a time oh they tell God, you I where you're gonna go blind, probably so. wouldn't have yeah <laughs> um no but, but I, no that's what i did i watched it out here so i yeah. did see the pinhole through the you know you turn your back to the sun and you exactly that way. Cool. i did go to magic kingdom and uh yeah i got but some uh, pretty pretty okay photos because I realized uh, because like the glasses that they sell that if you you know if you're holding those up to your phone everything else is going to be completely blacked out yeah. so you can't like you can't see anything else uh, and I didn't order a solar filter for the camera ahead of time so I'm like well. That stinks. I could have actually used my good camera rather than having to sit here with a cell phone. But uh, luckily, there was a really, really nice girl who's like, just just hold the glasses out and then you can kind of like focus far away. And then you'll get a good photo with like Cinderella Castle kind of in there and the the eclipse in the background. And yeah. so that's exactly what I did. And I doubt that she is uh, here listening or watching right now. But thank you. If you are, uh, it really helped. But the thing that I learned, I didn't include a photo in here because I posted it on social media. It's at the end of the the Instagram video we did. The the canopy at Tron is... I saw that. Complete, yeah, I saw you post that. Yeah, it's a complete barrier. So you could literally watch the entire thing happen. Oh, see, The entire cool. way. I didn't even think 20 about 20 years, it. we'll go. We'll meet there. Well, no, in, <laughs> in 20 years, I mean, that's going to be a, a total eclipse here. So it's not as exciting the time leading oh, up yeah. to it. We want that totality moment, uh, which I'm jealous of everyone in the uh, in the regions of the totality regions that got to see it all. Yeah, it looked Kim, incredible. Kim and yeah. she was... Uh, well, I, I watched, um, because when I came in here, you know, I got that Roku... Um, I 
on uh, Hulu, they had ABC was doing a special from like one to four, and they basically had reporters in every one of the totality, like the major cities, and they were kind of re- like they had a little screen where you could see it starting to happen, yeah. and they would talk about it, and then they put it on. But it was like it was really emotional I, I watching people like react to it, but like seeing all of them, like watching Robin Roberts, she like couldn't talk. She was like getting so choked oh, yeah. up, and I was just like, I'm like sitting in here crying watching this happen, and I was like. I'm so mad I didn't get the uh, It's okay. It's okay. Um, I mean, that's the thing, though. They're still, like, that's the last total eclipse until 2045, which it is coming through uh, Orlando at that point, assuming that the weather is good. That's why I bring it up here. I know everyone, uh, you know, start making your vacation plans early for 2045 because uh, it's going to be a cool place I, I to think, watch a total eclipse. I think Disneyland is also going to be covered in part of it because I looked in the – the totality kind of covers wave. California through no. Florida, and I so I think like all Disney domestic parks might have be in the wave of it. I could be wrong, but yeah, um, I all I know is that I I know this is the the last total one until the next one. But of course, there always still could be the annual in country, eclipses though, right? in this country. Yes, yeah. in this country, but uh, the partial eclipses. If that happens, and you're ever in Walt Disney World, you don't have glasses. You don't want to do a pinhole method. Go to Tron. That yeah, is that's my, good to know. Absolutely. And that's why we've been talking about this so long here. It wasn't just to bring it up. I just wanted to make, hey, to make well, sure people know. In our lives, I mean, yeah, there was one in 2017. How often in our lives? This is one of those moments, though, I feel like, you know, you know what was well, kind of cool watching it all is that it's like a moment of unity. And there's it's like everyone kind of just realizing it puts into perspective how small we kind of all are and this yeah. sort of thing. And But like these celestial bodies or cat, I don't know. It's just like it, it's kind of cool. So I think it is nice to take a minute and reflect. Oh, on absolutely. Like, and the the last partial eclipse was just in October of 2023, so it's oh. not because total the big one. That's that's when you get the you know you get the glow all around and yeah. you can look at it. The but corona. yeah, the corona. So uh, if you ever find yourself down here when there will be a partial one, I believe they call those ones the annulars. Uh, head to Tron and check it out because that was such a cool way to see it yeah it's going to be now overloaded every single time there's one (laughs) there but it was the best spot so uh yeah that was that was my day yesterday well that sounds fun it was missed you yeah well yeah I was I had, I had videos to edit and stuff, so I was being productive. So it wasn't like I wasn't doing something. Hey, so hey, Ryan, yeah, what's in the news? Well, we got some news. Uh, so last week, Walt Disney Imagineering released a new YouTube series sharing more about what Walt Des- Walt Disney Imagineering does so um you're definitely going to want to head over to youtube uh to their youtube channel to watch it and um the upcoming episode which i I thought that was a really cool uh announcement but we're going to talk about the first one here and that theme of that one was audio animatronics and with it came a brand new look at uh animatronics for tiana's bayou adventure including tiana lewis mama odie prince ralphie and more and i am honestly very surprised at like they look great. The movements are great. Like, at how many there are. Yeah. Well, I mean, Disney said it. It was just the people online also, on like Twitter. To, oh, look at Tiana's lips. They're moving. They. It absolutely looks incredible. I know the discourse was that, you know, oh, they say there's going to be animatronics in there, but there's not actually going to be a lot. Uh, and we already know that there will be 12 uh 12 plus critter animatronics i forget the total number that there will be but we know there's going to be another critter announcement that i was expecting to happen uh before we were going live today and it obviously <laughs> i'm glad didn't. i don't have to say that I'm, word again i'm actually very glad that we don't have to talk about the critters today i would have loved to have talked about an opening date but i digress uh and so yeah we we get this look so we know the critters are going to be animatronics we've seen all these characters like the imagineering video i i, I think it might have been the instagram post that included Charlotte. Charlotte dancing and mm-hmm. Eudora and uh, they all look amazing yeah. like next level to the point where I, I know like Walt Disney World at least our logs kind of move a little bit slower so that way we have I love that more, little snake with the beignet I like the snake with the beignet too I just like it these animatronics look so great and I'm like at Disneyland, that ride goes so fast there yeah. that you're not going to be able to see these things. But at Walt Disney World, at least we'll get we'll get a little bit more time with them. But I'm, they I'm, look so good. I'm curious to see if there will be a difference in like 
placement and work, or if they've said like they're identical animatronics, they're building two of each and they're oh, gonna uh, put one on one, you know? I, I have to imagine that they're building two of each with it. And even like with the the Imagineering video, I think like the one Tiana that's on the log was marked like Disneyland's. Oh. And so maybe that's like maybe they have unique animatronics oh. at some places because it's not the exact same ride track. But at the same time too, uh when they made that series, you have to imagine that these animatronics were already installed at Walt Disney yeah, World. Yeah, that's, tr- that's actually true, it, yeah. Because if it's coming out that close, and if we're supposedly that close to an opening date... Yeah, and it, we've got to be close. Not like, nailing them to the ground last minute. You know, uh, exactly. That. No, yeah. they need time to have it in there installed, really testing it out. And, you know, they're making progress. Uh, they hung the signs out in front where, like, you first really enter the queue, not the not enter the outside portion of the queue, but once you walk into the building, they have the Tiana's Food sign hanging up there now, and they just rolled out uh, the car yesterday that's going to be parked right beside the entrance cool. and it's sitting beside but i couldn't really get a good shot of it from the train station it just wasn't happening so it is literally moving along you you can see the progress just uh just picking up pace and you know i i complained last week i think that every time i go i don't get to see the water flowing i finally got to see the water flowing yesterday but oh, yeah? they weren't running it yet they were yeah. they didn't have imagineers riding it or anything so i'm like that's that's my next goal in life is is to see it, but I, I just have terrible timing with it. But um, I'm excited. Yeah, I, I can't wait. I, I feel like we got an opening date coming any day now, and maybe it'll be by the time we're done recording this because we don't have it yet. But we do have some semi breaking news. Okay, you know, hey, if they announce it, we'll fire it back up. Well, sure will. We're stuck in these seats now. Yeah, we're 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 actually we're nailed to the floor. What do they say in the Muppets? The the Hey, we're not going it. anywhere. We're na- yeah, we're, we're nailed, nailed to, to the, the floor. floor. <laughs> I don't know why we're saying it like Seinfeld though. I don't. Yeah, I, I can't. I can't undo it. Okay. Um, we have. Uh, okay, so we don't have the opening date, but um, what we're going to talk about now is uh, the disability access service system, um, which uh, some rumors have been swirling around now um, that have proven to be somewhat true that there's some changes coming. So Disney is making a change to the DAS system at Walt Disney World effective May 20th and Disneyland starting June 18th. The system has been effective at helping guests with accessibility issues experience wait times outside of attraction rather than in long lines. Now, the wording has now changed to say it is a service that supports guests who, due to a developmental disability like autism or similar, are unable to wait in a conventional queue for an extended period of time. For, uh, from now until the dates previously mentioned, guests can have an in-person conversation to determine eligibility at guest relations or pre-arrival conversations to determine eligibility for DAS two to 30 days prior to park visit. Disney will work with Inspire Health Alliance to determine eligibility. At Walt Disney World, guests will have a meeting before arrival to determine eligibility, and same-day registration will also have to be done via virtual chat. At Disneyland, they will have a live video chat opportunity, or they can request on-site at an accessibility services window. There is more information on the system that guests using DAS need to look into, including party size, uh, party sizes, enrollment periods, and more, and you can find that information on Disney's website. Disney said that DAS usage has tripled over the past five years and hope these changes will help reduce misuse of the system that has negatively impacted the guests that truly need it. I yeah. mean, it's true. I, I, th- being, you know, you were both former cast members and you were also a team member at Universal. You know, unfortunately, you do kind of witness and just being a regular guest, you kind of have seen the abuse of these different types of systems. I mean, the the system that's in place now is different than the system that was there when I worked there, and that one was definitely, like, yeah. really abused. I, I'll be honest. When I worked at Test Track all the way back in 2010, it wasn't even a thing where, like, I barely felt like we ever got guests who had any, like, who needed accessibility uh, extra help with accessibility because, you know, you had... You had paper fast passes, which were like so effective and how everything worked that like it didn't really I I was trying to think back, like, do I remember really interacting with this and universal? Absolutely. Uh, That, you know, all the way back in the day with our our cards that we had always have to fill out right in front of greeter and and, you know, take whatever the wait time is and subtract 15 minutes. And that's what time they could come back. And that system, I mean, I know I know it got abused a lot because I, I know people who abused it and flat out 
told me that they were abusing it yeah. because oh well, universal they they're so lax about it and you know it, it started to become a thing where once once people learned how much you could abuse it then it just snowballed and it has become a problem and i'm not sitting here saying that there aren't legitimate people who actually need this accessibility services because they are absolutely out there and yeah. you know it, these theme parks i think they need to do whatever they can to actually make sure that you know, the people who do need it are the ones who are able to use the service for sure most. And I'm hoping that this has an impact on it. You know, Universal went the the method of that. I believe SeaWorld, other places were using it, but I think in Orlando, SeaWorld started using it first and then Universal where you have to, you know, get your medical notice from your, your health provider and put that in their system and then once you got approval through that then you would go and talk to their guest services to actually get your pass or or not get it based on on what all happened uh, with the with the system and that's like you know I, I think that that's had a a positive impact over at Universal in terms of cutting down on abuse but I do know being in the Universal pass holder group there's also a lot of people who are always saying like, yeah, I've never had an issue getting it, but once they switch systems, now I can't get it yeah. anymore. And it's in, you know, in their opinion, it's not an abuse of the system. So uh, times times are changing, and I it's I don't envy anyone who has to be in those positions. It was one thing being at an attraction, having to just write down a wait time when to come back and return, uh, but it's another thing having to be in those positions where you can either make or break a family's vacation. Yeah. because of it but i i don't i don't know if there is an actual like if, if there's an actual way to make sure that it's like truly fair because i feel like you're always going to leave someone out well it's tough it's tough too because it is it it, it does you know it, hopefully securing the system for those folks who do need it you know um it's i can already imagine it's very difficult for people especially people you know people who have invisible disabilities you know that yeah. aren't as you know and that's the thing you know and there, there's i i just hope that this process becomes one where like that system that is made for those people is you know it's not like an extra loop now that they have to jump through like an extra. I, I don't want it to be more, even more difficult for somebody that already has difficulties, yeah. you know, because other people who didn't need it used it. But that, you know, that is sort of the, the, the vetting system has to be there somehow or something like that. You know, it's, it's tough. It's hard. Yeah. And it, it, especially with how they changed the wording around to now, like mention autism specifically in there. Like that's just, I, I don't know. It, it I, I feel like, you're not necessarily like you're missing out on a, a wide swath of people that still need, you know, they need to find an accessible solution. And I did, I saw well, that it's a spectrum and, too. So it's yeah. like some people suffer it in different, yeah. in different ways. And, and one of the things I think Disney said on the website, we didn't have time to dig into every single section of it. Cause this just really started to unroll before we were getting ready to go live here. But I believe it did say that they're, they're working on extra op options for like longer queues in terms of how people can leave the queue if they need to. So mm -hmm. it's not like they're not trying to make it all better, but I it's it's one of those things I I feel terrible for anyone who relies on this system that's now going to have extra difficulty in their vacations it's Disney's always felt like a safe spot for people and I hope that this doesn't end up ruining that yeah because that's the lot if they take the magic away from there where are they going to find the magic and in this case it's not like Universal's doing it better because People are getting turned away from Universal, too. So what is the option then? What do people have? Well, and then, you know, it, it comes down to it, too. Like, I, I don't know how it's going to work in terms of, like, you know, we have a lot of international guests. So, like, is medical documentation, you know, is it across the board or is the United States, like, in a different thing? You know, I don't know. You know, um, and I I just, it's, I always had hope for, like, you know, I know I think Universal did it first, but with the virtual cues, and how those would work and ideally you'd be like okay well now no one will ever have to wait in a a crowded queue because nobody likes that and yeah. um for more than like 30 minutes and it feels like there hasn't really been an answer to that because even with tron using the virtual queue gardens of the galaxy use the virtual queue, you you know rise of the resistance you still end up in a really significantly yeah. long line well, even with that and so it's like it's like there's got to be i know people have their different feelings but i was like there's got to be a better way 
to yeah. make it so that people aren't just spending hours in lines, you know? Yeah, they, I'm sure they will figure it all out. And the one thing I want to point out with it, too, is, I mean, I feel like I've been here for a couple of the updates to these systems over the years, and it's always looked at as kind of doom and gloom when it first is announced yeah. and rolls out. And then it's one of those things that people get adjusted to it. They end up finding, you know, there are ways to, to use it. And obviously, with, like, the last system that was in place, if they were seeing guests five times more guests than previous being able to use yeah. the system, then obviously there was there was a lot of people who were able to use it. So uh, hopefully hopefully it still allows people who, who truly do need it to to be able to make the best out of their vacations. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll keep you, we'll keep you updated. We, we don't have first hand experience. Yeah, exactly. That's so the thing. That's you know. the hard part. I'm, so I'm, let us know. Yeah, and I've traveled with people who have used it before over the time for various regions. You know. Yeah. So, um, but I yeah, we don't have any experience with it yet. So, um, well, bouncing back to last week, Bob Iger and the Disney board fought off Nelson Peltz and part of the shareholders meeting included Bob Iger getting to share a new look at what the Disneyland Avatar experience could look like as part of Disneyland Forward. What do you think? This definitely isn't in one of the two parks. I think it's in that in-between area. Yeah, so I was still always thinking of Disneyland Forward as the kind of that separate big space that felt like one kind of medium sized park off to the side. Yeah. But then I, you know, I like everyone else went down the wormhole, saw what other people were saying, and then I don't remember who posted it on Twitter, but one Peter, person Peter uh, I, No, no, no. I it, I saw him do one. But. Yeah, but a lot of the information that flows is I saw this from this person Not and this so I don't know <laughs> I don't know who the original person is that broke down the the methodology where it basically will butt up to not just Disneyland Hotel but Paradise Pier yeah. and then uh, other and then downtown Disney as well. Like it kind of is just gonna be sectioned off into other other parts of it, um, and that made the most sense to yeah. me once I I saw it like that and. Uh, it, well, they were saying I'm, it's in the original concept art for Disneyland 4 because some of the structures match where it was. And they're like, yeah, this is just general concept art. But they're like, there's no denying that you can see the swirl of the 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 like rib cage looking thing in the water. And, and yeah. I was like, oh, interesting. And no, I, I think this is in terms of the concept art for this. This is what they want. This is what they want their avatar experience to look like. And this to me is not like, you know, when avatar experience was was noted, this is not uh, this is not just an experience. This is this is fully fledged. This looks yeah. incredible. The amount of water that is flowing through it. I, I like that it looks different from Disney World. Exactly. Because that was my fear is they're like, oh, well, we don't need a double. And I like that it could be like another part of the planet. You know, another piece, you know. Exactly. Yeah. So I don't know. It, it'll keep it completely different. And I mean, it can it can still feature Flight of Passage if that's what they want or a better version of Navi River Journey, hopefully, uh, seeing those boats and yeah. having outdoor portions. Hopefully, they can find a, a better way to do an attraction like that. But this, this artwork has me very excited for Pandora, which is something I don't think I was ever going to say after the longest time here because it just it you know pandora feels like it's it's old news at this point but artwork like that has me super it's super pumped interesting too that it's like a subsection like not in one of the parks and i wonder if disneyland could end up going the route of how the two universal parks that exist right now um how they have an attraction that you can only ride if you have a park hopper so like if this is that sort of an experience where because of where it like sort of is is it like do you buy a separate ticket for that event or do you just go to a different area and it's part of your pass so if you have a one-day ticket does it include that or do you have to have a hopper pass and that's the only way you get access to pandora you know what i mean i, I don't even it's know what that, that because up. i mean thinking about how small that entire area is it's also possible that it could technically be retained inside theme parks but just connected via very long tunnels and walkways like even longer than anything then, with galaxy yeah, Edge, like galaxy super Edge. super uh far back and stretching and i mean it's it, it's a different type of concept to do it that way but it's not something i would necessarily hate uh it you know the, the part of when they had the 
kind of reveal with Imagineering and Tiana's Bayou Adventure animatronics. They also that that kind of stemmed off of a trip that some uh, some people in the media industry got to take to Imagineering, where they also got confirmation like they're about ready to uh, file paperwork with the Florida Water Management District to to start work on Beyond Big Thunder and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And like that's to me that gets interesting because then I'm like, you know, I don't even need it to be right immediately behind big thunder there's still a lot of land back there i know because i drive it multiple times a week and if they have to even make a super long walking path to kind of like really make you feel like you've disappeared i like that and then reappear i'm okay with that and i'd be okay with that here uh at disneyland being able to do that you know maybe maybe heck it's like it's like with uh universal uh Universal Studios Hollywood, their Halloween Horror Nights. You have to walk. That, I mean, that's like true. You a gotta, mile you to get do to the, yeah, one to section. do the ones all far out. Then the lower lot, and then all the way out there. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it's an inconvenience, but at the same time, too, it it kind of helps if you can say, okay, it's part of Disneyland or part of Disney California. It's just you really have to take a little while to to get there. Then then it could work. I mean, we just got done talking about accessibility, and it's not the most accessible. Well, I was thing, thinking there there could be a thing where it's like you know the, the the trams how they go from the parking lot. There could be a tram situation, but they're like you know themed, so they're transporting you, yeah. transporting you. Boom, nailed it. Boom. Uh, so you know it's it, that could be part of the that could be part of the attraction. That yeah. could be the attraction, you know. Mm-hmm. And then the rest is just exploring that area. We'll see. Yeah. I, I mean, either if they, way, if they end up with a Satouli canteen that's way better than ours. I'm going to be so sad. I'm going to be, be there all the too. time. I, I'm just excited to know what else is going to be there. I think it's going to. This is all going to start picking up more and more now. Uh, a lot of you know a lot of. There are plans. I know that we're going to find out more at D23 Expo, too, but I really do think Disney also wanted to see what was happening with the board vote as well. Mm-hmm. And as you said, it ended up a success for Disney. All their nominees got yeah, good. got voted for. I, I'm 50-50 on it. I, I feel two ways with it. One, I, you know, I, I try to have faith in Bob Iger and what his plan and vision is and uh he obviously thinks that the board that the board members that you know he wanted people to vote for he thinks that will help disney move forward in the way they need to but at the same time it's also you know it's a board they have to vote so if they would have added two people who were kind of dissenting opinions mm-hmm. onto the board they're bringing a different a different mindset a different know, a different viewpoint I, there's on a part it. of me where i'm like nothing's ever going to get done well, it, I no stuff will still get done. Stuff still would have got done. It just you would have had people on there who are questioning things. I think a little bit more rather than just saying, "Yep, sounds good. Let's go for it and let's move on." But again, that's that's just one side of it. At the same time, too, I'm also on the side of I want to trust Bob Iger and I want yeah. to trust that he has a path forward and he knows what the company needs to do with these parks in the next 10 years and what they need to do with the movie front because we're not even talking about the movies today but they you know so many of the movies they they announced the the release years for it shifting and dates shifting too, yeah. thank you that's it, the word I was, was looking like- for I think the Moana live action was supposed to come out in 25 and now it's 26. And, exactly. And I was confused because they were making it out to be like, oh, it was this year. And I'm like, no, that's the other Moana movie. <laughs> yeah, that's Moana too. Yeah. And then live action Moana was supposed to be 25 and now it's 26. They did yeah. a lot of that. I, there's a lot of things that he is trying to like swirl around right now on top of figuring out who's going to be the next CEO, whether it'll be Josh Damaro, whether it'll be Walden or any of the other people we talked about. There's a lot going on. So I feel like his life will be easier finding that path forward if he has the board behind him that will support him but you know a little little anarchy also doesn't hurt things from time to time right <laughs> i don't know about that but uh <laughs> back on this coast we also got artwork for uh it's not avatar but um ours is test track so disney shared a new look at the exterior of the attraction after it's upcoming update the attraction's final day of operation will be june 16th and it will close june 17th to go through its reimagining yet again Uh, goodbye canopy it's been nice yeah i guess that this is the first time in like yeah forever ever no, I mean, right. uh, I don't know ever, but no, no, like, no, not back. I mean, this is the still the same building. Test Track originally was World of Motion, 
Uh, and was it the, the same attraction? It, not the same attraction. World of Motion was a, a slow moving dark right. ride that went through, but the building test track messed up the foundation a, a little bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the building is still the exact same. But that's the whole structure that was there before when it was World of Motion, and so the building retained its shape and and look once it moved from World of Motion to Test Track. But because the ride path was different, you know, the World of Motion had an iconic exterior and. And they had to change that for test track, put up that awful canopy, and just really ugly up the area. And now this new this concept nice. art, it looks sleek. It looks futuristic. I like that, that lip of the building. structure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it gives a better view for people who will be able to go to the Chevy Lounge up above who are lucky enough to be up there. They're going to have a, a even cleaner lookout to it. I just think that this – I love that they're actually investing – back into this attraction. I know it's not everyone's favorite att- attraction, Rhino. I know it's not your favorite attraction. I think you... I, it's fine. It's like, whatever. Yeah, I it's, I, it's just not... It's it's not... Uh, for me, it's not memorable. It's like, I know everyone will be like, but it goes so fast. I'm like, for like 30 seconds. Yeah, and I think that's the the hard part is that's what keeps people wanting to go back to Test Track is you, you realize that, that thrill aspect to it that, that you... Before Guardians, you didn't really get in Epcot anywhere. So that was... Yeah, that's true. That was the one thrill ride. And now you have Cosmic Rewind, so you have that in a different place. But obviously, Test Track holds a very special place in my heart um, because it was the attraction I worked at for such a brief time. You know, Rhino spent eight years at Disney. I spent spent eight minutes, basically. And they said, beat it, bozo. And uh, I so I love Test Track. And I worked there for... uh, Hit the brakes. Uh, I worked there for Test Track 1.0, so I still was there where I'd have to be, you know, working at the Fast Pass split off oh, yeah. point where you're hearing all of the sounds of crunching and crashing and everything happening right in the queue that was the most obnoxious thing in the world but then once it's gone you forget how much you you realize you know, you're gonna miss it and you do miss it uh i it just when they changed it over to this 2.0 version the well, tron it, it, yeah, version why not just make it tron it didn't make any sense they should have they, uh, they re- honest to god like because it, it would have been like it, it, easy enough that's your vehicle from the grid that you've built, and then you go around and you're in the grid, and it's like, but then you're in the real world, and then you're not. They were never going to get funding for it if they wanted to make it a Tron one. They needed, oh, I guess they the needed car a car company. company. Yeah. It was GM originally, and then Chevy took over. They needed Chevy to you know stick with them and uh, or move over to Chevy to get them to to fund the first one and now to keep with them so Tron was never going to work in that way and it's not a terrible attraction it just went from something that felt like there were so many little hidden easter eggs around so much that immersed you into an actual story into the original version that was just kind of stripped away and instead it became so much like oh you can build your own car yeah. which it's, i i hate give me irrelevant at the end too relevant means absolutely nothing yeah. it's just something to distract you rather than have a you know a normal ride safety video which also test track safety video was iconic do. Was that it was the crash dummies? With, or was that no, with Bill McKim, where he's standing behind and they're picking out all the different tests that you're going to go to. I can only you think don't of even the new one it. now with with um with which call it and uh, who's because who's in the new one? Does a guy? In, oh no, I am thinking of the original. Uh, never mind, I'm thinking of the other one. Yeah, the one with Bill yeah, McKim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you'd be like, oh. What about the thing? Like, you know, I, yeah, it's I'm like, not going to lie. I didn't pull, like it. Pull up, you didn't? <laughs> no, I didn't oh, like it either. Well, um, I don't know if we can be friends anymore with that, but that's okay. We can figure that out off air with it. I, I just thought there was so much good about that that they then stripped away for no reason whatsoever. And I... I know that you know they want to also look to the past with this new update. They want to they want to use inspirations from World of Motion and just just bring some heart back into this attraction. And I you know maybe I would have been more pessimistic about it before, but then once you start looking at Tiana's Bayou Adventure animatronics and and other plans, you're like you know what I actually trust them. Maybe maybe they can pull this off. It's not like they have to do much. The base of the ride is. It's still a great ride, in my opinion. You have that thrill. You have the little moments that kind of calm down in between. They just need to find a theming inside that makes you feel like this is worth it. Ka-chow. 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 I I also wouldn't complain about that. If they just throw a random Lightning McQueen in there, 
you know, it's a throw. You already have the semi truck in there. Just make it Mac. Like, yeah. Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I don't I don't have a lot of emotions toward this attraction, but uh, you know, I'm always excited for uh, attractions to get updates and. One yeah. other one also got one recently too that we've talked about that we should talk about again. I think. What's that? You wanna? Um, so we covered it in this uh, in a recent vlog that's out on the channel now. If you want to watch that, uh, but last week Star Tours received its update to include a new scene from Ahsoka and transmissions from Ahsoka, Andor, and the Mandalorian. Uh, we shared some of our feelings in the moments in that vlog, but it's been a couple of days. You know, the weekend, I've seen more and more people um, experience it. So yeah. how, how, do you, how have you, how's it sat with you over the weekend? Okay. the I definitely think we experienced the best version of it. I, I do too. Uh, we, and we'll explain that here, but uh, the Mandalorian and Grogu, that if you're watching this, this is what you see is like the kind of blurry transmission. Yeah. You also have the option of seeing, or the potential of seeing Ahsoka or Cassian and Andor and seeing uh, Mando and Grogu was the absolute best. Yeah. I mean, they they add in the best little 3D twist to it. I, there something was exciting about it. Like I got excited to see Cassie and Andor up there, but then I just was like, oh, that's that's kind of it. It's just it's just Diego Luna being Diego Luna real quick, <laughs> and uh, it just I w I was I'm happy they found a way to incorporate him in it, but it was underwhelming. And you know, seeing Ahsoka, it's I think that would be more impressive if then you didn't just go to Peridia yeah, see her anyways, see yeah, her yeah, anyways. So. so a little bit of a doubling up. Uh, the one thing that Brooke sent me afterwards that I completely missed. Did you see Ahsoka fighting? in the the first scene like where the stormtroopers were no yeah so i we obviously we weren't allowed to record on star tours with it so like in the first scene when you know you board and you get ready to go off uh you would have either like darth vader kylo well, we Ren, the stormtroopers Falcon, yeah you follow it out but if you look really closely in that scene you see a tiny little ahsoka fighting and she's got her two lightsabers so what? you know it's her yeah and she's down in just a tiny bit i didn't brooke had to send me the video because i didn't believe her but it went thousand percent oh, okay okay it's true. I'm so something have, yeah. yeah yeah that's cool missed it on my ride something oh, a that. reason why i want to go back uh and like we said i loved loved the little transmission bit uh the first planet you go to at this point there's just no way you're ever going to make sense of it we went to Kashyyyk. I, yeah uh hannah and i when we did it we went to uh we went to naboo for pod racing which made <laughs> even or, yeah, sorry even not naboo sense. tatooine for pod racing which oh. made even less sense it just I it, that that part is still a mess. I wish when they do these updates, they could find a way to tell one cohesive yeah, story just throughout the entire you attraction. Start in, just keep it locked in yeah. that time frame. I, I mean, I know that takes away part of the you know yeah, saying the, we have over two hundred combinations. Yeah, you can I guess do. it lowers it, but I still I'd rather have that like. So because now that we know, you know, R2 and C-3PO are a part of all of them. So it's yeah. like, well, OK, we're grounded in the reality. So for us, when we started with the Millennium Falcon, but then we did the Kashyyyk and I was like, isn't this the prequels? And, yeah. you know, it feel, that part feels a little like a little weird because yeah. it, it, I feel like it could be so much more triumphant if you're like, we're in that time frame. Yay. Yay. Well, we're going to show a spoiler here of the actual the new scene that's added in, not the transmissions, but the new scene. Uh, and so if you don't want to see it, just close your eyes for like 30 seconds here. But uh, yeah, the the Purgle flying to me, it, it felt underwhelming the first time we did it. Like nice to add it, but it still felt underwhelming after thinking about it it just moves because well, it's supposed to so be like slow. this moment when it's in the when it happens in the show like in ahsoka you know or even in the animated show in rebels it's supposed to be this kind of serene calm moment so it is like a little weird you're like oh whales and then you're like wow now we're shooting around them and i'm like if you hit one of these whales so help me god it it there i will say they add this like cool fun like 360 effect that yeah, happens kinda. that i thought was like well i was worried because we were in the front row and you heard me say all that i was like fantastic because <laughs> like, i was just like oh god um but yeah i i don't know it it's cool because i think what what i really kind of love about this is um you, you know i'm not a gatekeeper when it comes to star wars obviously um is that like there's we're now 
well beyond generations having grown up and like having watched them all in a row. Mm -hmm. So these kids who grow up watching the prequels, you know, there's even younger kids who grew up watching Clone Wars and and Rebels. And like, you know, I didn't get it when Galaxy's Edge was opening that Ahsoka, that, uh, not Ahsoka, um, who sells, who, who pilots the Millennium Falcon in the attraction? Hondo Anaka. Oh. I didn't I thought that was just an animatronic. It. Yeah, no, I meant like who who gets you a who Oh come who, come, my friend. Yeah, come come. Hondo. Um yeah. And uh you know, it, it, I thought I was like, oh cool, they created this character for the land. And then like watching the show, I'm like, wait, what? So like yeah. I imagine like what it must be like for these people who are like that's their Star Wars. You know what I mean? Like yeah. people always say, That's not my Star Wars, you know, that's not my Luke. That this is their moment to be like, oh wow, cool! I finally yeah. get to see, you know, this version of Star Wars I love so much come to life. It's like when the the BDX droids were roaming around Disneyland. It's like, where is he? He's behind you here, BD One. The these guys are so cute, but like for me, it's like, oh my god, the little, little guys from the video games. Like, yeah. I love that. I can't wait. I get to see them before you do, if I have enough oh, time. Jerk. So. Um, well, no, never mind. You were there with me. I was going to say, well, you weren't there when Chopper tried to steal my Ronto rap, but you were there. I was there, and I basically was like, can we just move on already? Like, I, I, I'm, I'm bored with this. Oh, I loved it. Um, but I, I just, you know, it's it's just that fun, like, oh, it's so cool. It, it's fun to see these, like, new different parts of Star Wars coming to life. Yep. And I, for, especially for Star Tours, I feel like, and especially for the Star Tours here, I feel like it really gives it, 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 it does breathe new life yeah. into it, it and needs, it makes it more exciting. It and it more has relevant. to keep doing that. Yeah. yeah. And and as much as I have a love hate relationship with the the cartoon series, uh, I you know I think it's great that having Ahsoka become a series and really having you know building up that Clone Wars, Bad Batch, uh, Rebels community, like giving them something to get behind that that is a great thing. But uh, I just yeah. It's, this one's a little underwhelming for me. It's not going to get me to keep going back on Star Tours over and over. I'm happy yeah. that it exists. Uh, I'm I'm now just ready to turn my gears to Disneyland for uh, seasons, seasons of the, the Force. Force. Come on now, it looks we everything. It, you looks know so what's good. crazy is every time someone comes out. So they really they release that really cool retro commercial on Instagram for yeah. the Millennium Falcon popcorn bucket. Which if you've if I'm following Disney parks, you know that popcorn bucket was out. Yeah, it, it's it, been it out keeps before. coming out. Yeah, and it's a cool popcorn bucket. But that commercial for it was so cool, and I'm like, okay, so they're getting that popcorn bucket, the the stormtrooper salvage head, which yep. is supposed to show up at ours too. But didn't they get another? The they Jabba. got the job of the hut with yeah. the salacious crumb little uh, straw thing, uh, the clip uh, too. And then they have um, they have the uh, space mountain got its overhaul right. Got is is it? Yeah, I think Space Mountain's it doing hyperspace right now. It has to be. Otherwise, so, like, what would be the point, yeah. right? But Galactic Grill added back new food and stuff. Yeah. And and, then, and I think there's new drinks in Galaxy's Edge. Yeah, they added the two from Galactic Star Cruiser. Yeah, and that, then a non-alcoholic one, I think, outside. Yeah. It's like a green one I saw. Exactly. Something. And Sabine Wren's now meeting with yeah. uh, guests over there, which, again, I don't care about. I That's the one thing. I wish that Galaxy's Edge on both coasts was so overpopulated with characters that people didn't swarm them. So, like... Like, while you enjoyed yeah. your chopper experience and you loved every second of it, it just there was a pile of 20 to 30 yeah. people around. And then it's just I have to have been the first person like, over there, which it is was great like I if you're in that. But there. I'm like, I want there to be so much happening yeah. that you are just like, let me just live in this environment. Well, the Mandalorian can't even about. get out of his little alcove at, in our coast. So I he didn't, and I saw a video where he was walking around with Boba Fett the other day over there. And I was like, this is what I want. I want to see them yeah. roaming. And, and so it's it's kind of like. I think they just need to be releasing them all at once, like yeah. Ray, Chewie, everybody. Well, I guess the hard part being like Ray and Chewie can't be out at the same time as them because yeah. they're not in the same timeline. But the, it's still like then flood the other characters. Yeah. The main thing I'm bummed about is that with Disneyland, I don't think I will get to see the fireworks from Galaxy's Edge. Oh, no. Which, yeah, I just because I'm there for a special Pixar Fest preview, I don't think that that will be in our itinerary but I, for I the two days that we're there. They're staying. I think that's like a permanent. I mean, thing. yeah, I, I want to see it now, though, yeah. because I don't get to go back with you and Hannah, so yeah. I'm only there for two nights, and mm. I really wish I was able to see that, too. I filmed fireworks from Disneyland's Galaxy's Edge at, at one point in time just because 
Mike, I think this is a cool angle. So I love I love the addition having John Williams music playing in there now. I think Disneyland is going to be the place to be this summer, yeah. considering having Season of the Forest running and Pixar Fest starting up too. It's a uh, good time for, for Disneyland people out there. I'm excited for some good food. Oh, I, the, I, I bet you are. Food. I know. <laughs> Well, I think uh, I think that's gonna probably do it for this week's episode of the show. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. felt like there was something else that we missed in here, and I can't remember now. Well, I know that's all we have in the script, but yeah, I don't know. There's something like gnawing on me that I, I can't think about. And well, we've see... got a chat going, so they've got a couple minutes if they want to throw it in here real quick. Somebody yeah, I like, okay. Oh. oh, I did want to talk about this because uh Don Don asked here the asked if I got to see Forces of Nature by Anti Gravity yet. And oh, boy yeah. did I get to watch that. And I'm going to try to be as respectful as I can with this. Uh it was very, very obnoxious when I went to see it. So uh to to paint a little context to it, I went on so we did the show last Tuesday and mm-hmm. then I think I went on Wednesday there was a really bad storm that was about to come through that day and make things a little cooler for us so I'm like okay maybe I'll get to see it before it starts raining and so I go over I miss the first show but I go for the second and hanging around the area for probably about 20 30 minutes uh waiting waiting for the show to start and once I see the performers come out I get up and I walk over to where the little stage is set up and I'm I'm excited to be there. And so I'm probably about three feet or so away from the rope. There's another guy standing right next to me and I'm like, okay, well, not a lot of people care about this, I guess. So there you have it. And show starts and I'm actually really digging it. Uh, they, they quieted the entire area around for the the background music so mm. just the music for the show was playing and i feel like it fit in with that completely like perfectly like it just it blended the music sounded like it should be the background music for that area and honestly the way the stage is tucked in it's not like it's there it's not like that's really disrupting anyone or anything it's just it's able to kind of exist in its own little pocket once an hour for 15 20 minutes however long the show was but about halfway through the show uh a, a tiktok <laughs> live streamer came up to me and screamed in my camera I, I was only filming with my phone because if it started raining i didn't want my good camera out there uh screamed in my phone saying you're blocking the view for everyone around you i hope you know how rude that is and I just ignored him and let it move on. And I'm just like, I'm baffled because in all of my years of going to see shows at Disney parks, watching them in areas like this anywhere, they almost always encourage you to come up to the rope, wherever the pylons are, the, yeah. the little barrier. They always, always encourage you, get as close they as possible, come drop, and they'll see. They'll come out, drop a rope or drop a thing, and they're like, this is where we you want to stand if you want to be in the front. Exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, in all the years of always doing this and seeing shows, this is the first time where apparently everyone else around said, no, we don't want to get close at all. We're gonna stand we're we're gonna stand as far back as possible and just you know, not not get anywhere near it. So then in that context, I'm like, yeah, okay, I guess guess no one else wanted to come up or get close so i was probably blocking the view for some people around when anyone could and i i went up to him after the show was over and i was just like you know if they wanted you to watch from all the way back here they would have put the barrier all the way back here anyone there was room for kids to get in front of me there was room for anyone to go up and be around and everyone could still have a great view of the show and he just lost it on me about how rude I was and how I took away from I took away from the guests around and I ruined their experience and the reason that he or anyone else could be in the content content gathering community oh, like God. the reason that we can have jobs is because of the guests and while I do agree with that it's that is a certain extent if you piss off everyone around you nonstop no, which we you're never going do. to do we that. never try to do it's I, it's never intentional we never we never jump in front of kids we never do any of oh, that yeah. stuff it's, ever you even know? if I am like filming on my tripod and I'm gonna have my camera all the way up I make sure that I try to have it all the way up like 30 minutes to an hour ahead of time so I'm letting anyone around me know like this is what the, I'm set up here other people are going to be here too doing the same thing if 
if you're concerned about it, I'm letting you know up front now. Yeah. Like I'm I'm doing this and I really and I try not to go too aggressive. There are people who definitely get even more aggressive than than I do. It's but no different it's, than somebody throwing a kid on their shoulder, though. I hate to break it to you. Because yeah. you're it's not like your camera goes above your head. I, it goes and, up to your head. And I try not to think about it that way. It's you know, that is always a valid excuse with it. But it's yeah, I, I just so I didn't I did go see it. I really enjoyed it, except for the person yelling at me. And then I found them on TikTok later <laughs> and they were talking crap about me. They they obviously wouldn't curse in a park. So they're like so calling me a Richard instead of uh, no, no I thought I'm you the, were saying that word to me. No, he literally said what a yeah, Richard like he was being a Richard. And then after <laughs> that, like I heard him later and say, yeah, go ahead, throw up, throw up your videos. So two people on the Internet will watch it and i'm just sitting there laughing i'm like listen i know i know our viewership has fallen i know all of our videos don't hit and that probably one what a that wasn't one to do it but i'm like what a freaking jerk yeah so that guy was um, a richard yeah that was <laughs> i i have another word for it it's <laughs> yeah, a lot more aggressive but yeah that's uh did get to see it enjoyed it can't wait to go back and uh get a better video of it from hopefully further back so i don't ruin his experience or anyone else next time just have it be the so. widest shot you can make you know so it's just like that people be like why'd you frame it like yeah. this why are you and so far away the dumb thing about it is in a situation like that you want to get as close as possible to it not only so you can appreciate what they're doing see it but it's in a walkway area that if you're not far up then you basically are watching the entire show with people walking right in front of you through that section yeah so it only makes sense to get closer I'm just, I'm still baffled by it. So it was nice to get this off my chest. And uh, I wish the best for, for this guy in the future. For Thoughts little, and prayers. Richard. Yeah. Uh, I, I know people talk crap about us on the internet, but I went fine. and looked at threads on him too. And boy, Is what it good? a trip. Okay, good. Well, then he can, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, good stuff. Did we talk about the Americas, the tropical Americas model at coming to Animal Kingdom? Did we do that last week? Um, We didn't. That was, so... I believe with Tropical Americas, the, the kind of the news around that, they, they included a little bit in the one social post. I think that was Instagram that they showed a look of like, hey, the Imagineers went on the trip. And then I know the people who went to Imagineering got to see uh, a couple extra up close looks at it. But yeah. it's, it's exciting that that's moving forward. Well, it's the, yeah, I, th- I thought we had talked about it because I thought we talked about it being the biggest non-announcement. <laughs> like the, yeah. They're like, remember that thing we said was probably pretend? Well, I don't think it is, and no. we're kind of telling you what it is. And so it'll be interesting to see how that, that comes in comes into play a little yeah. bit more. But, I, yeah. I, I, it's all very exciting. I am just sad that we have to wait to D23 Expo because I think this is, besides an opening date for Tiana's Bayou Adventure, because that's opening we have to wait the summer, for D23 and for an opening date for, <laughs> yeah, and then an opening date for uh, for Country Bears, uh, that obviously is going to open before D23 Expo. and Country Bears, you think so? Yeah, yeah. Oh. I, it's, I, I know there are some Disney people out there not working for Disney that cover Disney. Like, I think uh, Mickey Views said... Uh, maybe sometime in late July, I believe. Wow, I, okay. I can't remember, and I've heard similar things to that too. So, uh, I it's going to be opening before Expo rolls around, and you know, it, it maybe even more closes as well too. We'll have to wait and see on that. But I, I definitely, uh, I definitely think that's kind of it though for big announcements. And now we just have to wait for what actually is announced at D twenty three Expo, which. Hopefully, we'll blow our minds as we're sitting all the way in the back. Not the very back row, but pretty far back. Pretty far With back. a great view of the stage, but pretty far back. That's what we wanted. Yeah, I want I want to be able to see Josh tomorrow looking like an ant like an all ant. the way on the stage. What is this, a stadium for ants? Um, it's an arena, not a stadium. What right is this, now. an arena for ants? I'm excited. It's an arena. I'm hoping <laughs> that my Mighty Ducks vans come in time so I can wear them to the Honda Center. Oh. Yeah. I should get a Charlie. What's a Charlie Bucket? What is Charlie's name? Charlie Banks. Banks. No. Adam Banks. Adam Banks. Charlie. I was like, Charlie. Um, oh, Charlie Conway. Conway. Yeah, Conway. I was like, I live on Con- oh, Conway. Adam Banks. No. Charlie Conway. Conroy Road is where I live, not Conway. Um, well, but stop I think telling people where you live. <laughs> God, guys, the address is my social security number is. Um, if you do that, I'll get a Fulton Reed. Well, uh, wait. But if you're doing Fulton Reed, then shouldn't I get? Who was Fulton's? Who were the Bash Bros? The other Bash Bro? Yeah. It oh, was, um, 
Uh, it's in the just second put one, the right? singing voice of Max in a Goofy movie on the back. What? Are you just finding this out now? What? Yes. Is from Mighty Ducks 2? Yeah. The Bash Brother. He's also in Newsies. He's one of the well, Newsies. I never boys. watched Newsies. Oh, my god. I don't. Their goodness. accents were too fake. Christian, you've it. never seen the yeah, entire from Boston, Christian I Bale library? I couldn't hear their, uh, yeah. No, God, no, I'm not. I don't wow. Like Bale. I'm super disappointed in you. I know. We're watching Newsies on the after show. All right. Well, <laughs> um, well, uh, that is going to do it for this episode. And now of is the time to seize the day. The dis- I guess that's a Newsies reference. Sure. Santa Fe. Uh, I I know uh, newspapers. That's I don't. That's, <laughs> that's not, not even that's a song. I imagine there's a song in there like that. Yeah. I literally got to the first song and I was like, "Good lord, I cannot handle these accents." Bill Pullman. Yeah. Bill I didn't even Pullman. get to him. Terrible. Yeah. All oh, the movie's terrible too, though. So don't worry. Um, well, I just want to remind everybody again about Dreams Unlimited Travel before we go and booking your next Disney vacation. Remember, there are those two offers out there, the free Disney dining plan offer, which is now live for Disney Visa card holders, as well as that save up to 30% on hotel rooms at Walt Disney World this summer and fall. Again, if you go over there, it's no obligation. You get the help of a Dreams Unlimited travel agent and uh, it costs you nothing extra and you help keep the show going, the lights on, you know, the uh, jobs going. And uh, that also goes for our Patreon supporters. We couldn't do it without you. And we hope to see you over at our live post show following this immediately. Um, not immediately, immediately. I'm probably going to put some food in my the old meat hole. Nope, that's not the right word. Pie Whoa. Hole? Pie hole? I, you Mouth? know, you've lost me at this point. Mouth. So, uh, the, food. Yeah. Uh, I'll do what your son does when I watch the. Yeah. That's, what is, more. Is that what he wants? Uh, more. Okay. Because he. Anyway, uh, that's patreon.com slash Diz Unlimited over there. And again, if you are watching us on YouTube, don't forget to hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. And if you are listening to this out there, we very much appreciate all of you out there. And when you have the time, please rate and review the podcast as well. So that's going to do it for us this week. Um, A little thing before we go, make sure you're going to want to drop your, apparently we're doing this now. You're going to drop your outro pitches in the YouTube comments. So this week's outro comes from Maria Stott, D.C., asking me to say, Quoth the Brother Sherman. Quoth. Quoth. Quoth the Brother Sherman. There's a great, big, beautiful tomorrow shining at the end of this podcast. Yummy, yummy, everybody. <laughs>